Hi, I'm Fred Turk. I served with the 1st Cavalry Division, 1967 and 68, in the Republic of South Vietnam. I was a draftee in the military for two years. Uh, got out of high school and got a draft notice, and I was out for six months and then went right into the military. Everybody knew they were going to get a draft notice, and you just waited for your number to come up, and it was a very, very common thing. Everybody went to the service. Being a young kid, excited, but yet, you, you knew nothing, you didn't know anybody, and all they did is hollered at you. You weren't afraid, you think you're invincible, nobody's gonna shoot me. And it, it was hard on my parents. Well, when we landed in Vietnam, uh, we took a commercial airline over, and, and they said it was gonna be hot. They opened the door up, it's just like walking into the oven, it was 120. I was in the infantry, I carried a rifle, and I was in a 81 millimeter mortar platoon. We carried it with our company. Hot, miserable, dusty. You knew what you might be doing, but you didn't know what you're doing. You talked to the old timers that come out of the field, and, and it scared you more. I can describe it, but do you do you understand it? It's hard. To, you're not there. You weren't there when the, the smells, the noise, just a general living where you lived out of sea ration cans. You dug a foxhole every night. You lived in that foxhole with your buddy. Walked through the jungle for seven miles and set up again. We were in an assault company. We'd go through a search and destroy what they call for looking for a fight, looking for an enemy. And if we got in a fight, you'd dig in or you'd, you'd overrun them and take care of them. And then that night, you'd be expected to get hit real hard because they're coming back after us. And then maybe the next day, they'd air assault us out to another battle. We, we did a lot of air assaults and a lot of heavy jungle walking. The jungle was nasty. Pure misery, pure hell. You couldn't breathe, they were carrying 130 pound packs with you. Couldn't carry enough water. It, it, it was just, it was terrible. If it wasn't for you being a young guy, you wouldn't make it. Uh, I was in the mortar for doing, we got tired of carrying our mortar rounds because they were hot and heavy. Uh, we tried to steal a young water buffalo to carry our rounds with us and it didn't work. We, we got in a little trouble, I guess. And we had to give the water buffalo back to another village and probably not good represent representation of the people of what you were because you're under stress 24 hours a day. Somebody gonna shoot you or try to bomb you or kill you. So you took it out on some of the civilian people too, which, which wasn't right. It, it, it was life changing. We went over as a kid and uh, within a few days, you were out trying to kill people. Uh, everybody had a short time calendar, a piece of paper from the Red Cross. It had our division patch on it, and every, it had 30 days on it, so you'd mark every day off. Came home on the 4th of July, and I come right out of combat. Everything terrified me. You drop a pencil on the floor, I'd jump. Uh, well, they call that PTSD, and we all, we all suffer from it, from being in combat. You don't think you do, but you worry about having your back to the door. Uh, who, who just walked around the corner? In the middle of the night, you got to go up and check your windows. For what reason? You're just doing it. When we come back home, we weren't wanted. We were shunned. We, you didn't tell anybody you served in Vietnam. Yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate I can talk about it. A lot of guys can't, especially some of the bad things that you can release and get it out of your mind. It, it's back here, but it's bothering you, but you don't know it. I'm with the Buddy to Buddy organization out of Ann Arbor, a referral group and some veteran needs help in anything, finances, uh, whatever it might be. We refer them to people that can take care of them. And a lot of times they come to us, uh, they're out of money, they're out of food, they're out of housing, and we can get them some help immediately. And if you're talking to another veteran and you get emotional, it, it don't matter. Just tell a veteran, thank you.